Today I'm going to try and stay true to the title of this video. So this will be about the four colour map theorem. I'm not going to go into things like the seven colour map theorem for uh, donuts or toruses. The second is I'm going to concentrate on the proof. Now there's some very interesting history to the four colour map theorem and it raised very significant philosophical issues about using of computers in mathematical proofs. So I'd encourage you to read widely on the four colour map theorem, but today I'm going to focus on the proof. And, and finally, this is going to be an introduction. So I'm going to cover uh, some of the preliminaries and the two major concepts in the proof. And at the end, you'll, you'll sort of get an idea about how the, the proof of the four, four colour map theorem works. So what is the four colour map theorem? Well, it says that every map can be coloured with at most four colours in such a way that the neighbouring countries are coloured differently. So let's have a look at an example. Here's a map and it's been coloured with four colours. And you can see the boundary between where we have a boundary between any two countries. Uh, then we need to use a different uh, colour for each country. Just to be clear though, look here where we have a um, uh, four countries in fact meeting uh, at the one point. And here there's no problems having these two countries green. Uh, so where there's just one point, we can have the same colour. OK. So I'm going to do this in three parts. Firstly, I'm going to simplify. I'm going to reduce the type of maps that we have to consider. Secondly, I'm going to focus on one of the really major concepts, which is unavoidable sets. And these are things that must be in a map that requires more than four colours. So if there is a counterexample to the four colour map theorem, unavoidable sets tells us that things that must be in it. And then we'll talk about reducible configurations, which is the opposite, things that can't be in a map that requires more colours. So let's go to simplification. So here's two isolated maps. Now, if the four colour map theorem is true for just a single map, then it's also true for multiple maps that are isolated. I can, can, I can use the four colour map theorem. Uh, well, it tells me that I can colour this left map with four colours. I can colour the right map with four colours. And then I'm done. I've, I've coloured multiple maps. So I don't really need to worry about multiple maps. If, if I can just prove the four colour map theorem for a single map, well, then the argument will hold for multiple maps. And it will also hold for multiple maps that are just joined at a single point. OK. Now I want to talk about cubic maps. Now generally we're going to have a, uh, a border or a boundary between two countries is going to be a line, but there'll come a point sometimes when we have a meeting point, and that's where we have three or more countries meeting together. So here we can see uh, here's a meeting point, three countries, and here's another meeting point of three countries. But of course you can have more. Um, I think, well I know there are four states in America that join at one point. It was in The Simpsons, I think. Uh, Arizona, Colorado, New Mexico, and Utah. Um, I understand from YouTube there's no uh, point on the earth where four countries actually meet. But clearly, uh, for what we're doing with our mathematical proof, we have to prove it for any sort of map. And clearly, you could have a map that's got more than uh, three countries at a meeting point. So I'm going to show you that it, it's just enough to look at cubic maps. We don't have to worry about all these uh, maps with meeting points that have more than three countries. So a cubic map has exactly three countries at each meeting point. So here's how the proof goes. Suppose that every cubic map can be coloured with four colours. Okay, so we're going to take that as given. Along comes this. This is a non-cubic map because we've got six countries meeting in the middle. So here's what we do. We add an extra country temporarily, which I've got there in blue. Now what's this, what this has done is it's turned our map into a cubic map because now every meeting point has exactly three countries meeting. Now the, if we assume that every cubic can be coloured with four colours, that means that I can then colour this with four colours. And clearly I can do that in a way, well I've got to make sure that the countries, the six countries around the, around the circle are coloured in a way so we don't have two countries sharing the same border. So here's one way we could do it with these colours I've indicated here. And now what we can do is just take away that temporary extra country. And now 
we have we have coloured this non-cubic map with four colours. So it will suffice to only consider cubic maps. That's maps where every meeting point is, is of exactly three countries. Because if that's true, then it's true for maps with meeting points that have more than three countries. OK, so we've finished the simplifications. Now let's get on to the next major thing I want to discuss, which is unavoidable sets. And these concern themselves with things that must be in a map that requires more than four colours. Now I'm going to show you something now that involves, well this is something that actually must be in any map, let alone a, a map that requires more than four colours. So when we look at countries we have this country on the left we'll call a Diagon. It has, this is a country that has two other countries bordering it. We have a triangular country here, a square country and a pentagon country. Pentagon country, five, uh, five countries that are borders. And what I want to show you is that we must have one of these four countries in any map. To do that we go back to Euler. And Euler um, created this famous equation for maps. He said that the number of faces minus the number of edges plus the number of vertices must equal two. Now I've transferred that into, uh, into the language of what we're discussing today. So he says the number of countries minus the number of boundary lines plus the number of meeting points must equal two. But he includes a country on the outside of the map that just goes on for, in, for, for infinity. So, so let's have a look here with this map we've got here. There are five countries, the four obvious ones plus that one on the outside that I mentioned, minus nine boundary lines plus six meeting points and sure enough it equals two. So let's use that equation now to show that we're going to show that every map has at least one country with less than six neighbours. So it must be one of the countries uh, that I showed on the previous slide. So to do that I'm going to use what's called proof by contradiction. If you're not familiar with that have a look at my video mathematical proofs made easy, it might be called proofs made easy, I can't remember. There's also a, a bit of an explanation in one of the other videos in this playlist called Intro Proof Fermat's Last Theorem. So the basic idea is here we want to prove that every map has at least one country with less than six neighbours. So to prove it we, we assume the opposite or we suppose the opposite and then we have a whole lot of logical steps and then we prove a contradiction. And because we've got a contradiction, it means the only thing is that the first supposition must be wrong, which helps us prove what we want to prove. So for my proof, I'm going to suppose to the contrary that all countries have more than, six, uh, more than five neighbours. Now you can show, I won't go into the details here, but you can show that the mean, number of meeting points is less than or equal to two thirds of the number of boundaries. You can show that the number of countries is less than or equal to one third the number of boundaries. And then you put it in that formula of Euler's that I adapted. So you have the number of countries minus the number of boundaries plus the number of meeting points. It must be less than or equal to the number of boundaries divided by three minus the number of boundaries plus two thirds times the number of boundaries. And that equals zero. So we're saying that this equation, that the, the end result must be less than or equal to zero, but that's contrary to what Euler said, who said that it must be equal to exactly. So the only conclusion we can draw is that that initial supposition, supposed to the contrary that all countries have more than five neighbours, that must be false. So we've made a little bit of progress. We've shown, let's put that up, we've shown that one of these must be in any map, and hence it must be in any map that requires more than four colours. OK, before we go on, I just mentioned that if you like this video, you might like some of my other videos in my intro playlist where I uh, look at uh, important uh, conjectures and theorems in mathematics. So you, I've got ones on Fermat's last theorem, Poincaré conjecture, the prime number theorem, etc. I've also got a playlist made easy, it's called, and it's for first and second year university students, although late high school students might find it also interesting. I go through typical exam questions for things like Taylor series, integration by parts, finite fields. Another playlist, favourite mathematical stories, is just a hodgepodge of things. The number E is everywhere, formulas for pi, the largest number, things like that. 
I have another playlist, How Things Work, where I use basic high school maths to explain how things like JPEG, RSA code, CT scans, and Google search work. And finally, I've just started another playlist, Mathematical Musings, uh, which you also might find interesting. Sounds to me like I've got too many playlists, but that's another story. Let's summarise now where we've got to. We've said that we can. It, it's okay to just look at single maps that are cubics. And in the second part of the video, we looked at an unavoidable set. We said that if there is a map that disproves the four-colour map theorem, then it must contain either a digon, a triangular country, a country that borders four other countries, or a country that borders five other countries. Now imagine in the next section, which we'll call reducible configurations, I could show you that if there is a map that disproves the four-colour map theorem, it cannot contain a digon, a triangle, a square, or a pentagon. Well, then we will have proved the four-colour map theorem. On the one hand, we're saying that if there is this map that disproves the four-colour map theorem, it must contain one of the four countries. And then we proved that it can't contain any of those four countries. So in that case, we would have proven the four-colour map theorem. So now let's look at reducible configurations. And I want to start by introducing the concept of criminals. Now here I don't mean people that are in jail. We say that a criminal is a map that can't be coloured with four colours. And in particular I want to talk about minimal criminals. Now if you had all these criminals, all these maps that can't be coloured with four colours, there would be some that would have the smallest number of countries and we call them minimal criminals. So the four colour map theorem is equivalent to proving that minimal criminals don't exist. Okay, so I'm going to start by showing you that a minimal criminal cannot contain a digon. So let's suppose that there is a minimal criminal and it does contain a digon. So this is proof by contradiction. It would look something like this. And you can see that digon in the middle there. So what we're going to do is we're temporarily going to take out that digon so we get something like this. The two countries around it have just filled in the space where the digon was. Now because this is a minimal criminal, we've dropped down a country and so therefore we must be able to now colour this map with four colours. So we go ahead and colour it and here you can see I've coloured one of those countries blue and one of them green when I just look at the, the countries that are where the digon would have been. And of course now what I can do is I can now replace the digon. So I'm back to my minimal criminal but now I've coloured it with only four colours. And that's a contradiction. And so the only way, the only conclusion is that minimal criminals cannot contain the digon. So let's just go through that slowly now, the proof, the proof by contradiction. So what we're going to prove is that no minimal criminal can contain a digon. So here's the proof. Suppose there is a minimal criminal with a digon. So that's the contradict the proof by contradiction part. We start with what the opposite of what we're trying to prove. We temporarily remove the digon. Since the minimal criminal is minimal, when we remove a country, the map must now be able to be coloured with four colours. We can now reinsert the digon with the choice of two colours. But now the minimal criminal is coloured by four colours. This contradicts the definition of a minimal criminal. So a minimal criminal cannot contain a digon. OK, so we showed that a minimal criminal or must contain one of these four shapes and now we've just shown that we can rule out the digon because we've just proved that a minimal criminal cannot contain a digon. Now I'm running out of time so I'm just going to outline what what happens next. The triangle is essentially the same proof that we did for the digon. Instead of having a choice of two colours we'll have a choice of one colour. So the proof is pretty much the same. Now the square is much more problematic. Um, it's, uh, well, to prove that a minimal criminal can't have a square country, a country bordering four other countries, it's, uh, it's generally, well, we generally use this thing called Kempe chains to prove that you can't have a square. It's about a, it's a couple of pages, two or three pages in a book. 
So it's not too hard to show that you can't have a square. So that only leaves the pentagon, and that's really been the problem. That's For the last 100 years or so, mathematicians have tr been trying to prove that a minimal criminal cannot have a pentagon. And that was what was finally achieved in the last couple of decades, that it was proved that you can't have a pentagon. So if that's the case, well, the four-colour map theorem is proven because we've, it's been shown that there are, are no minimal criminals. So that's it for the four-colour map theorem. I hope that's helped start you on the process of understanding it, or at least just given you a bit of an overview of how it all works.